my lovelies, it is literally 5.30 in the morning and I woke up and found that the original video of this video was copyright claimed and I'm just annoyed because I use a copyright free like program and there's probably a way I can prove it but at the same time I'm just like ugh, I'm just gonna re-upload it. So please um, interact with this video uh, comment, like it, it definitely needs the boost, and without further ado, here is our feature presentation. Thank you guys for the support in the original. Ah, oh, I'm so annoyed, I'm so tired! Uh. I'm the trash man! I come out, I throw trash all over, all over the ring! <laughs> I'm back! Welcome back, or welcome to another episode of Secret Life of a Cam Girl. I'm Noah Bensi, and I can't do a somersault. Today's topic is all about toxic gatekeeping Ew. and how it doesn't benefit anybody, not the keeper of the gate or the people knocking to get in. So I've spoken about this before, but part of my reason for even making Secret Life of a Cam Girl in the first place was the way that I was treated when I was new in this industry. So first of all, there was way less, obviously, information out there about camming, about adult stuff, 10 years ago than there is now. I feel like we have a lot more resources in general. So I went into this like low-key blind and when I would reach out to other models thinking that they would be friendly, like we're all in this together kind of vibe, 9 out of 10 times I would either get scolded or spoken to with the attitude of I had to figure this out so you have to figure this out. And it was like really disheartening and thankfully I did find models that were willing to kind of mentor me and help me or at least answer some questions um, that I was having. But it was like really tough and they were really mean. Like so, so mean. Sidebar, I remember this girl. Okay. So, I, ca I cannot make this up. This was just, like, so karmic. So, there was this girl that, when I was trying to build my Twitter, I would sometimes, like, tweet out girls that I was interacting with and be like, hey, would you follow me back? And, like, sometimes they would. Sometimes they would ignore me. Um, not in, like, a spammy way, just kind of, like, asking them nicely. And there was this one girl, I don't remember her name, don't remember who she was, I just remember she had blue hair. And I was like, hey, would you follow me back? Um, and she was just like, said something along the lines of like, you have like no followers, like not until you have more followers, like just so mean, so mean, kind of like making fun of me. And she tweeted it out publicly. And I was kind of just like, okay. And I unfollowed her. Um, years go by, I have like, 80k people on my Twitter, um, I'm obviously successful in, like, what I'm doing, and the same girl, and I knew because she still had blue hair, um, but, like, I just, like, remembered her face, uh, <laughs> asked me to follow her, and she followed me, and I didn't follow her, I didn't even respond, anyway, <laughs> back to the topic. <laughs> But yeah, my point is my inspiration for making this YouTube channel in the first place was because I didn't want new models to feel as lost and as clueless as I did. And I know that when I'm personally learning a new thing, a new platform, I kind of need to be walked through it to really understand it. Um, that's just the kind of learner that I am. So, like, I wanted to make my channel, like, a source of, like walkthroughs and make it known that I am a person that like if you're totally lost and you need a walkthrough or you need something like you can come to me or come to my channel and hopefully that video or I will be there to help you. I am also a 
talent community ambassador for Xbiz. I absolutely love Xbiz. Um, I love my role. And um, I wrote an article about this topic, I think like four months ago now, after doing a podcast with Sex Work CEO, where they brought up the topic. And I was just like, ooh, I'm like aching to talk about this. And then after that podcast, which you can go listen to, um, it's on Spotify and everything. I will link it below. Um, shout out to Melrose. Uh, but yeah, uh, I wrote an article about it after because I just really wanted to hear like other people's sides of this and what they felt about this subject. And obviously it's something that I don't agree with. So I really wanted to hear like other takes on it. Because I feel like gatekeeping in this industry really needs to be reflected on and called out, like truly. <laughs> so in this video, I'm pretty much going to regurgitate what I wrote in that article along with the comments that were left underneath it. And uh, hopefully we can get to the bottom of toxic gatekeeping and make it known that it's not okay. I believe that gatekeeping is a really interesting topic to be discussed because the type of gatekeeping and jealousy that becomes so toxic doesn't come from a dark or hateful place necessarily, but from a place of fear and like this false belief of like scarcity. Like, if I give this information, or this secret, or if I help this person out, I will lose money, I will lose fans, I will be less valuable. And that's just not the truth. As creators, we are led to believe that we can lose anything, everything, at any time, in a blink of an eye. And that we are not as unique as we truly are, and there are bigger, better and younger creators that are just waiting to take our place. And though we should like never take our success for granted, these beliefs that we internalize are simply untrue. True success comes from the power and flexibility that you possess. Your ability as a model and a business owner to not only roll with the punches but stay updated on things that are going on, to be able to save money, to be able to invest, to grow and evolve. That is where true success lies. That is where longevity in any business, but particularly in this industry, lies. It is so easy to blame things like oversaturation or the fact that another model might look like you or have similar interest in you on the reason why you might not be making as much money as you were making, let's say, a couple of months or a year before, or the reason why you hit a plateau. It is so easy to blame it on those things. But the truth is, this industry and streaming is just hard and random and there's ups and there's downs and there's times you're going to make so much money and there's times that you're going to be working well hopefully you save money but working paycheck to paycheck it's hard and it can truly be so isolating being jealous and gatekeeping is only going to impede your process and hurt you in the long run you should be able to reach out to creators with similar interests and vibe and talk and brainstorm and watch your peers stream and cheer them on and get ideas and be part of the industry. You are one of a kind. There is only one you. You can look exactly like me and like all of the things that I like and make more money than me or less money than me or be more successful than me it it's on an individual basis because the root of streaming 
really comes from the relationships you build and the consistency that you can provide to your fans and supporters. So let's not let our fear misguide our thoughts and make us feel even more alone. Now everyone put on their tinfoil hats because I have a conspiracy theory. <laughs> put them on. Okay, that's a thinking cap. Hold on, not my thinking cap. I need my tinfoil hat. Okay. I truly, in the deep of my soul, believe that these fears of someone being bigger and better and waiting and, and all of this, these fears that we fear are put there by the industries, society, by the men that have been running this industry for so many years. I truly believe that these fears are put there to prevent us from coming together and being a unified force and to prevent us from all being friends and all talking and instead makes us like super super competitive and catty and jealous of each other so that we don't talk to each other so that we don't talk about things that are maybe going on behind closed doors that shouldn't be going on behind closed doors or maybe we're not all getting paid correctly and stuff and I honestly believe that these fears are literally put on us so we feel this way towards each other and then even if you're not in like mainstream and you're pretty much like just a cam model like what I do or whatever an OF creator or whatever it's like this has been happening for so long and this is the way that we've been treating each other for so long that these untrue fears are kind of just like the way a lot of girls and guys and people navigate in this industry because they think that that is just the truth and like y'all if we can break that if we can change that do you realize how powerful we can be? Do you realize what a force we can be and how much that we can grow as an industry? As an industry, like, do you realize that? Just sit on that for a second. Think about how much better, how much safer this industry would be if we all looked at each other as family as colleagues instead of as competitors and wow just wow I'm just like I'm at a loss for words because truly that would just be wow just wow now look there is a difference between gatekeeping and maybe let's say keeping some things to yourself some secrets about your business that you have Maybe you have an idea that you want to put into practice before you share it with other people because you want to be the first to do it. And if you share it, you might dilute the success of your own idea. Or maybe a model approaches you for advice and then you realize they have done absolutely no research whatsoever um, and you kind of just feel like, okay, you need to Google and like watch some documentaries or something <laughs> before you come and talk to me. I get that, you know, obviously always be kind to people. Don't be rude. Um, but I get that. That's not gatekeeping. That's just protecting your business, your time and your sanity, truly. <laughs> Examples of toxic gatekeeping, in my opinion, are purposely giving someone the wrong answer. I've seen girls literally do that before. Insane. Um, or maybe someone asks you, hey, what camera do you use? Or, hey, uh, what software are you using? Or where'd you get that outfit? And then just like ignoring them or like being mean to them in their response, like, uh, I don't know, like purposely kind of just saying that you're gatekeeping that. It's like a, it, it's shallow. It's petty. A few years ago, I had a fallout 
with another model. Thankfully, we don't speak anymore, but we're okay now. It's fine. Um, but I had a fallout with a fellow model um, over OBS. Um, we both used OBS. In fact, she helped me um, set up some things on OBS that at the time that I didn't know how to do. And uh, once I got the swing of things, I was watching her stream and I was watching like girl stream on like Twitch and stuff like that. And I got a bunch of ideas. She had um, a game that she used to play using OBS. And I was like, that's so cool. I want to make a game. And like, so I sat there for days and um, I made this game and I was so proud of it. And I was so excited actually for her to like see what I made and I had different characters in it um, and I wanted uh, her to maybe voice one of the characters because I thought that would be really cool because I was thinking about making shorts. Um, it was this whole thing and I was really excited about it and it had the exact opposite response. Um, we had a very heated conversation. She accused me of theft even though I explained to her that first of all our games were pretty much nothing alike but second of all like that was not my intention um I felt absolutely awful and looking back with the knowledge that I have now about gatekeeping and I'm not saying she gate kept necessarily because like I said she did help me but follow me for a second but looking back on that incident I was like she's being so mean and she's like I had all these like n like harsh thoughts about her when in reality again this anger that she was projecting at me wasn't coming from a place of hate it was coming from a place of fear of all of that. Now, I will say in this situation, she was way more successful than me. Like, way more successful than me. But in her eyes, that didn't matter. And I was doing something that she was doing. Therefore, what she was doing was less. I didn't see it like that, but she saw it like that. And I think that if I realized that she was coming from a place of fear... I maybe would have handled my side of the conversation with more love and empathy. I'm not saying I got really, really mad at her. In fact, I got more sad and like defensive and I was crying and stuff on the phone with her. I think that I just would have been different and I, I would have been able to handle the situation better if I knew that the true place of where her anger was coming from. I don't know, maybe that would have saved our friendship. I don't think it would have, um, but I at least would have put us on a more uh, even ground, I feel like. And to this day, that whole situation just makes me so sad because I really liked her and I, I thought we had a good thing going. There's a few other little weird things that she did along the, our friendship, but yeah, that just makes me sad to look back on. Um, but again, it, it yeah, it just it came from a place of fear, and it's just sad that we are made to feel that way. <laughs> I feel like I'm rambling now. Okay, let's get into discussion. Um, I'm gonna show you the screenshots of some of the comments. Um, I think I chose like three or four, uh, and uh, let's go talk about that. I'm done rambling. I wanted to make this video not only to reinforce how valuable you are on an individual basis, but also how valuable we are to each other. And that your worth will never be lowered just because you helped out or gave advice to another model that was struggling. I hope we can all treat each other with more kindness, understanding, and patience. So now I'm passing this to you. Please, let's get into a conversation down in the comments. Um, I would love to hear your side of this. Have you ever felt the need to gatekeep? Have you ever been affected by gatekeeping negatively? 
um, have you ever given advice where it, it, it did mess you up? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I just don't feel like that's a thing, but maybe it is. Have you ever been jealous of another model? Um, have you ever felt like you're being pushed out by someone better? Please feel free, feel open. This is a safe space. Comment below. Um, be kind to each other in the comments as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I would love to hear your side of things, totally. Our first response to my ex-biz blog comes from the amazing, beautiful, awesome, fantabulous Seska. Um, she's been in the industry since 1998. She is an absolute force, an amazing advocate. I love her TikTok. I love her work. Check out her blog. Okay, I'm gushing. I just love her. She's beautiful. She's amazing. So she said, great topic, abundance versus scarcity. One of my earliest lessons in this biz is that you have to focus on being the best version of yourself and not worry about others. I remember new performers saying to me that because they were younger, they were quote unquote hotter. This was in reference to my colleagues who were in their 30s and 40s, myself included. They didn't understand that there are fans who like variety and some who attach themselves to a performer because they're the whole pack because of the whole package sorry not just looks or youth there is room for all of us if we send out energy that there isn't viewers feel that that's not good for your business for sure i obviously uh agree with everything that seska says here but this also brings up the topic of gatekeeping fans Fans like variety. Sometimes a fan will want to go chill with a more mature model. Sometimes a fan will want to go chill with a fat, sexy model or a skinny, cute gamer girl or I don't know. It's the adult industry. Tastes change on the daily. Of course, you're going to have the diehard fans that uh, are always going to be there. Your absolute regulars, they're obsessed with you and only you. But for the most part, you're going to have a lot of people coming in and out and they're going to be supporting other models as well as you. And that's just the way it is. And there's no point in gatekeeping your fans. There's no point. I've heard of girls threatening their fans. I've had fans come into my uh, streams and be like, don't tell so-and-so that I'm here because like she'll get mad. And I'm just like, that's ridiculous. I've seen girls fight over fans, um, get mad when they see one of their big spenders in someone else's room. It's just... <laughs> Your energy, I swear to God, your energy will be more valuable somewhere else, I promise you. Don't act like that. Don't do that. Um, okay, next comment. Love you, Seska. Oh. Our next response comes from the beautiful, magnificent Sabrina Deep. Um, all of the ads down below are Twitter ads, and I just want to remind everybody that they are not safe for work, um, especially Miss Deep here. She is a naughty, naughty girl. We love it. Um, her response is, I totally agree with you. The truth is that competition in the creator's department is the least of our problems. Fans don't reach to you based on casualty availability and order of appearance. They reach to you for your uniqueness and peculiar peculiarities, God, I can't speak today, which nobody else but you can offer. What I mean is that after you, they get to know me and they will start following me. They won't stop supporting you and they won't stop looking for more creators carrying their favorite genre. Collaboration among creators is an asset, not a business fault. I introduce other creators to my fans with specific requests, which are not in my piece of cake all the time. And I have sent new fans to me by other creators equally for the same reason. 
and that's awesome that's really honestly the way it should be we should all just be collabing and helping each other and unifying for sure okay so this last one is from our girl miss vicky here this is a longer one so this is why it's the last one um but i love reading these comments and stuff i love these discussions so let's keep having them okay so she's amazing um let me just like shout her out for a minute great personality she's a hoot um award-winning um she was nominated Best Businesswoman of the Year, like, every year since, like, 2016. Um, she has almost a million followers on Twitter. Stunning. Stunning! Okay, let's get into her comment. Um, she said, I very rarely cam. It's not my specialty. So maybe I'm completely out of line here. Please tell me if I am. I do a one-hour live show for my website members each week, and I do some one-on-one -on -one shows for my loyal fans and Skype fans a few times a week, so it's not a huge thing for me. However, a few times Cam Soda has asked me to do feature shows with them. I said yes. It was great. Did well as far as I know. Half solo, half was BJ, so it's popular. They asked me to do more shows and I considered it, but I wanted to log in and watch some other performers just for fun, just to see what everyone is doing. Why is this such a no-no? I would be happy to tip and compliment them. If I go to a strip club, I buy lap dances for my hubby, my friends, for both of us together. The girls usually love to dance for their sugar mama and sit on my lap, etc. So I thought cams would be the same thing, but no, I was not allowed in. To add insult to industry, in industry injury i had bought tokens i wanted to spend with them but my account was closed the money was returned to my credit card i never did a follow-up on it life gets in the way sometimes just thought it was super weird and i was kind of hurting pouting i was kind of hurt she was pouting oh girl I guess I do understand that it may make other girls nervous or that they may be afraid of the guys would try to talk to me instead of them, but I wouldn't allow that. I would never try to steal someone else's shine. It's like when I had girlfriends come to town, feature dancing, and she names a couple of clubs, um, they would pull me up on stage, we would grind all over each other, naughty, naughty things, guys would make it rain on us, my friends would always make more money because I was, I was there, nevertheless. If I am ever on cam anywhere, you are all welcome in. I would flirt with you, dirty talk, ask the guys what they want to see us doing. I see it as an opportunity, not a time to distrust and jealousy. Am I just out of line here? Like I said, camming is only a smallish part of what I do. So maybe I have no clue. This is such an awesome topic and I can make a complete separate video on this. So I'm going to try to keep it short, but yeah, I agree. My room. Okay. So in your settings, when you're a cam model, you can set it. So other models can or can't enter your room and uh a lot of models uh select can't because again what everything that vicky was saying they're scared it's that scarcity thing again they're scared the girls are going to steal fans or whatever now i will say sometimes there are models that go out of their way to do this which is nuts to me girls will literally come into rooms and be like hey i'm about to do a show come to my show and you're like don't not do not promo yourself in my room like that that's crazy um it's it it is in bad taste though so a lot of like the customers will be like why would you do that like a lot of them get turned off by that uh attitude in general but for the most part okay so okay i'm sorry i'm all over the place i leave my room open anyone can enter models uh fans whoever and i go into other rooms as well the ones that at least let me i love tipping my friends i love supporting my friends when another model is in my room um yeah i'll like 
be dancing for them and showing them some cool stuff and shouting them out, making sure my fans follow them on social media or follow their their cam page or whatever. Like, I love that energy. But like, again, maybe I'm the weird one, you know? Like maybe this entire video is just me being wrong and weird. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. But I agree with Vicky. I think it is super, super weird um, that models do not let other models enter their room. I love watching other girls. I love hanging out with my friends. I definitely think that it's fun and I don't understand it either. Again, I can make a whole other video on this. I can keep going, but I'm going to, I'm going to stop it here. <laughs> um, thank you guys, uh, for commenting on this post. Uh, you all are absolutely wonderful. Um, and yeah, kisses, lots of kisses. Okay. And all right, that is it for this installment of Secret Life of a Cam Girl. Um, I hope this video gave you some insight and some solace and some love. Uh, and yeah, I never know how to do these outros. Um, please subscribe, follow me on social media, uh, share this video, please. Um, I would, I will retweet anyone who shares it. <laughs> Uh, but yes, please uh, share and show some love and I'm going to stop talking now. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, night, morning, week, month, and I will see you next week. Same time, same place. Per. Ew, there's like a little fruit fly. I blame the bunnies. Okay, bye! When you have a bad day. Give up. Go home and sleep. Fuck it. Try again tomorrow. Not every bad day can become a good day. Some days are fucked and cannot be unfucked. When you have a day that is fucked beyond repair, that is the universe speaking to you, sending you a message. Listen to the universe. Go home. Save your energy. Tomorrow is another day. For now, just fucking chill.